It's my great pleasure to, to introduce Peter. Peter Phillips is the, the head of, of Cambridge University Press and, as you have gathered by now, Cambridge Assessment and Cambridge University Press are the two major partners who provide funding for um, Cambridge Mathematics. And uh, in Simon's absence, um, Peter has agreed just to say a few words of reflection. Thank you very much, Peter. Thanks a lot, Lynn. And thanks to everyone for your input during the day. It's been great to have such wide-ranging and informed and really interesting debate. As some of you know, uh, I started off as a mathematician myself, which has made me a really passionate supporter of better mathematics education. And I'm really grateful for the work that Lynn and all the guys on the team have done to develop the ideas that we set out at the launch of Cambridge Mathematics in 2015. Just thinking about the different elements of the day, you know, digital sales already represent about 40% of our sales at Cambridge University Press. So it was great to hear uh, Marilyn and Alison tackle the topic of digital technology and what the good use of it looks like in mathematics education. As Marilyn said, there are lots of opportunities with new technology to help make the learning process better for students. And interesting things to learn about the way to do that from around the globe. But I was particularly glad also to hear Alison's emphasis on professional support for teachers, without which I'm certain that we're unlikely to realise the potential benefits of digital approaches. And that, for me, is one of the reasons why it seems likely that the pace of transformation is going to be slower than many people have predicted, even if, in the end, the scale of opportunity may be even greater than actually we imagine today. The Cambridge Mathematics team are doing a lot of work on how to embed digital approaches into teaching and learning, informed by many people, including a number of you in the room today. That's already helping us in Cambridge, the press, assessment, and the mathematics uh, faculty and the education faculty in our thinking about this broad range of issues. Thinking about that last session, Andrew and Jane's session on the relationship between assessment and the curriculum, you know, I, I thought that was really interesting too. It's clear, and it came out very strongly from the, from the discussion, that high-stakes assessment impacts hugely on what happens in the classroom. And that means that Cambridge has a great responsibility and duty to ensure that our mathematics assessments are of the highest possible quality, and also, crucially, embody the best insights into how people can learn mathematics best. I'm sure that what Jane was saying about the emphasis uh, on formative assessment during the learning process is correct. But I think, as, as several people said in the discussion, teachers' approaches will continue to be conditioned by the nature of high-stakes assessment, which is why it's critical to get that right, even with the effective use of good formative tools. I think we, as Cambridge, want to respond to the challenges that came out from that, from that session. I think, first of all, to think about the way that we can improve assessments to reinforce the emphasis on connections between different concepts, different ideas. I think second, to ensure that our approaches reflect digital development. Several people made the comment that the way that assessments work mitigates against taking some of the full advantage of digital opportunities, and I think there's more that we can do. And I think third, to think creatively about pooling our skills across Cambridge to make the best use of formative assessment in mathematics. I think that the work that, that Lynn and the team are doing around the framework is going to be an important aspect of how we can do that. Thinking back to this morning, Jeff and Tony dis discussed the question of whose voices should be heard when designing the curriculum. I think it's very clear from that conversation uh, that there isn't a simple answer to that, particularly from the early teenage years onwards. I think it's clear, too, that different governments around the world have given different emphases to aspects of those outcomes, too. All four of the partners in Cambridge who work with Cambridge Mathematics, whether it's uh, ourselves or Cambridge Assessment or the Faculty of Mathematics or the Faculty of Education, work both internationally and in the UK. 
Overseas, we work with lots of governments and policymakers, whereas in the UK, you know, we've had to move constantly to keep up with frequent changes in policy, in curricula and in assessment. I think for me, the relatively short periods between policy changes have made it harder for the approaches to be effective in the classroom and also to produce really effective, credible evidence of the effectiveness of those different approaches as they change so rapidly. And I think for me, in a way, that was one of the drivers for setting up Cambridge Mathematics in the first place. I think what we're trying to do with Cambridge Mathematics is unique in the breadth of ex expertise and experience that we're trying to bring together. Curriculum design uh, and assessment from Cambridge Assessment, learning materials uh, and teacher support from the press, and both academic and practical experience from the faculties of mathematics and education. All four of our departments are really united by our shared mission to contribute to society through the pursuit of education and learning and research at the highest levels of excellence. We set up Cambridge Mathematics because we all believed there was an opportunity to use that accumulated expertise and research and evidence, but critically, not just our own, but drawing on the wider community to be able to test out the current orthodoxy regarding how mathematics is best taught and learnt, and to work together to pursue improved mathematics and improved mathematics education for everyone. I think today we've heard of the great progress that the team have made already over the last couple of years towards those aims. I think that progress has depended on the input from many, many people across the mathematics community, not just here in the UK, but around the world. And I think it was really good to have those live links to colleagues in Mauritius and Austria to remind us all to make sure that we learn from the many, many experiments and different approaches that are going on around the globe. I think at the heart of all of that progress is the emphasis on mathematics as a set of connections, which Lynn ta talked about right at the beginning of the day, and which I think is run as a theme through all of our conversations. So I'd like just to thank everyone for your help in getting the project to this point, and for your continued support in moving it on over the next couple of years to the end of the initial five-year period that we set up. I think it's only somewhere like Cambridge that we can create the space and the time necessary to do this work well and to pace it over a period of time. So please, you know, I ask all of you to continue to engage with the team, but also to spread the word about the quality of what they're doing with the Cambridge Mathematics Project. The desire that we all have now is to make sure that we can turn this research and the framework into something which can really make a practical difference in mathematics classrooms across the world. I mean, this work by its nature can never be finished, but I'm convinced that with the progress the team is making, we can, with all of your help, make a real contribution to mathematics education. So thank you for all your support. Thank you very much. I also have a number which Somebody's been lying here. This is, it's not possible that we almost have a millennium of... <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I feel silly saying that. 941 years of maths education around the, this room. Seriously? Bearing in mind I have zero. <laughs> that just is frightening. Anyway, 941 for those on Twitter and anyone who's interested. Whew. I'm honoured to be part of this room, to be honest. Okay, so thank you very much, Peter. I think it was lovely to hear you sum, sum up the key points of the day and also sum up as well our commitment to, to continuing to learn and to try and make Cambridge a place where we're really trying to do our best for mathematics teaching and learning around the world, as well as other subjects as well, but mathematics today. I think um, we've had quite a lot of requests from, from people around the room to um, share all the contact details of one another and share names, and I think that would be fantastic. I'm hoping to um, use that to track down lots of you quite soon. Um, but if somebody isn't happy to have their name shared, please just let one of the team know and we'll make sure you're not included in that list that we're going to circulate the list will come out with all of the other 
um, kind of summaries and, and um, photos and whatever we're going to do, the video links, um, they're all going to be shared next week. So you've got a few days to let us know if you're not happy to be up there with, with the crowd. I think I'd just like to say thank you so much, A, for letting me be here today as a non-mass educationist, because it's been a massive honor. I think it's been fantastic, and I've, I've absolutely loved the day. So thank you very much for, for me to all of you. And also, I'm going to obviously now, having heard all of you, hound you all to find out more about maths education, because it's been fascinating. Um, so the debate will continue on Twitter. We will continue um, with the hashtag Cambridge Maths 2018. So if you want to contribute after the day, please do. It would be lovely. And I'd just like to say thank you very much.